Okay, we're back with the Bug Project. This is Robin Sands uh, with a 79 Super Beetle. 79 to pronunciate. Super Beetle. I've got her uh, floor pans completely installed, ready to go. A little bit dirty now, but I have been sanding and sanding and sanding and sanding. The more I sand on this thing, the more little scratches and things I see I need to fix, but I'm done. I don't have them all. But I've got the biggest noticeable ones done. I'm ready to uh, paint the fenders. I'm going to paint this thing a pearl white, which is a three-stage paint. And I need to have these bug fenders off from my little bit of experience, or my lack of experience, need to say. Um, the curvature of these uh, fenders right in here will uh, allow my... Well, it will not allow my um, my paint to go in consistent, especially the uh, the tri coat, the middle part, which is the uh, base with the uh, the um, what do you call that? The white pearl. Yeah, the pearl. I had to look at a piece of paper to remember it. Anyway, uh, the pearl has to go on consistent, and if I have too much in one spot. Uh, it's very, very noticeable. So uh, we got her ready to shoot. I'm going to have to go over it with some prep saw. I prepped my room, wet the floors. I installed some fans up in the top, which I found out later that it's probably the wrong place to put them. I should have put them down at the bottom and had my filter uh, across the other side of the room. This is a homemade door filter. Um, I got a door out of a out of the habitat and took the glass out of it and fitted it with some uh, air filters from uh, from a, a house a regular house furnace. I got the size that would fit the door the best anyway, and then I had to work it in to make it fit right. I uh, got my fenders up where I could turn them, twist them on a swivel chair, like a high chair bar stool type thing. Uh, Got them mounted on there, tied on, so they don't accidentally fall in the floor. That's kind of important. Uh, first step in this is prep saw. Uh, please excuse the static in the background. That's uh, Caleb. I'd re rather listen to God's music static than any other music real way. Um, on the other hand, uh, this prep saw... Uh, rub it down it gets rid of all the dirt the grease and everything and uh, once I do that then I'll go over it with some of this tack cloth here I'll bunch it up and go over it and get rid of any kind of piece of dust uh, lint or whatever because that will show up real really bad in the uh, in the paint job um, got a good 3M face mask with charcoal filters uh, they kind of make me dizzy because I'm getting too much uh, of my own breath back in my head so you know I gotta kinda take my time and do that wear some good gloves turn the camera right up anyway wear some good gloves and uh, keep the paint off of you uh, get your room all ready to have overspray um, cover everything that you don't want overspray on because you're gonna get some uh, we're gonna start out with some base coat acrylic urethane base coat which I've got the jugs all pre-marked so I don't get ahead of myself, get confused and everything. I got I wrote down all the instructions on it. And this is just a white base coat that you just want to get good coverage. You don't want to make it shiny or anything trying to go on, but you don't want any runs either, so don't spray too much at one time. Uh, this MR-186 is what you mix with this Omni Plus uh, MP, MVP acrylic urethane. 50-50, you mix it half and half. That'll reduce it enough to get you a good consistent spray. Got all my spec sheets ready to go. One thing I'm missing, hang on a minute. There we go. I'm ready now. Uh, I can read my spec sheets and get my sprayer set right. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get my sprayer set right before I even think about spraying. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mix all these and get them ready back to back because I have 15 minute intervals between each coat. You know, I can wait longer, but why if you don't have to? This is your tinted base. It's your white paint with the tint. Pearl clear 
uh, pearl. Um, it's a transparent base which has the tinted clear in it and uh, or tinted uh, white pearl in it. We had some white pearl before, but somebody mixed it a little too thick. They mixed it five times thicker than it should have been. Uh, apparently, they didn't. They thought they knew how to mix paint, but they didn't. And uh, I did a test panel, and it came out kind of yellow. It looked fairly okay, but my wife wants white. My wife's going to get white. Uh, this is your DCU 2021. It's a very, very good urethane clear that you put over top of all this. It brings out the luster and the shine of all the uh, pearl and the white base underneath it. Got my spec sheets on that ready to go. And um, I'm recording now with an iPhone. I just got it yesterday. That thing there petered out on me, or I got too many videos on it. And I've done locked myself in this room till the end. There's no way out. Uh, I can get out if I have to by the press of a garage door button. But as soon as I mash that, dust goes everywhere. So we're not going to be mashing that. And if you want to keep your phone safe, Pretty good old uh, Peter Pan peanut butter jar is pretty good for the phone. So I just put my phone in there and stick it upside down like that right there, and I can see who's calling me. And if I uh, if I need want to answer it, I can. If it's my wife, I'm going to. Um, the spray guns. I got three different spray guns over here. Uh, I was told that the nozzle tip on the cobalt I bought just for this project was a little too big. That's my inexperience in spray guns and nozzle tip sizes. So uh, the book recommends a certain size and that falls within a certain size, but professional painters recommend a small one for good atomization on the paint. So I'm going down to this uh, Devil's Bliss right here which is a cheap knockoff of a devil's bliss i believe it has a 1.4 i was looking for a 1.3 but in such short time i really can't find one so they said to just keep test on test panels until i get the settings right uh that there's also a uh a 1.4 and you can tell the sizes by looking right on the oh, where are we there we go you see that 1.4 stamped right in it um, we're gonna go with this one first and uh, see how it lays down our base coat and then we're just gonna go from there oh I forgot this I gotta mount this put it on something so I can paint it real good um, anyway we're gonna get ready and commence to painting I'm gonna have to turn that fan the big fan on probably about a half an hour to 45 minutes I didn't want to turn it on now because it made so much noise but um, I'm gonna have to turn it on half hour to 45 minutes just to make sure that if there's any bugs flying around, they're going outside. Uh, I don't know in how many pieces, but they're going outside. They might survive and they might not. I don't really care. As long as this bug right here survives in one piece. Um, I don't need anything falling down on top of this thing after I start painting because once you start it, well, with my experience, it's too late. With a good seasoned painter, it's not too late. He knows what to do and how to do it. But I'm here by myself, so uh, I have nobody to fall back on but myself. And uh, maybe with this iPhone, I can get YouTube and maybe try to find out some pointers. Look at that. There's a fly. There is a fly. Anybody got a fly swatter? All right, dude, vacate. Go. Get out of here. I don't need you in here. You get in my paint and I'm gonna kill you if you ain't already dead. Anyway, um, we're gonna commence the painting here and uh, I will come back maybe in between coats. I don't know how to stick these videos together. Uh, maybe I can get somebody to help me do that. That's pretty cool, invisible bug with fenders. Uh, anyway, I don't know how to put these things together back to back. So if I come in intervals uh, in between each coat, maybe I can get somebody to splice it all together and make one short video of the whole paint job. And if I get any runs, I'm not going to show you. I'm just going to hide them and, uh, and make you think I did a good job. So, uh, of course, you'll know by the scars and stitches in my head when my wife gets a hold of me for having... Uh, 
bad having a bad paint job on her Super Beetle. Hopefully, they say that it's almost impossible not to get orange peel when you're doing a paint job. And they say probably about one out of 99, one out of 100 paint jobs come out with a nice clear glass finish. My wife's wanting a clear glass finish. So this is my first car. I painted many trucks, uh, big trucks. It really doesn't matter what they look like because as long as they're white or whatever color they want them going down the road, you can't see all that. So I'm gonna try from, from my lack of experience to not get an orange peel, but you know, that's what buffing machines are for and, uh, and thousand grit sandpaper. We can sand it down and get a good mirror finish. So anyway, I've run my mouth long enough. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start on this thing. I'm gonna get that fan turned on. And if you're gonna be locked in here for a good period of time, it's good to have a little refrigerator. I don't care if it gets paint on it. It might be my test panel, you never know. Have you some drinks, have you some snacks. So you can maybe throw something in your gut uh, in between paints or in between coats. All right, this is Robin. We'll be back to show you the final results or maybe during. Anyway, we'll get her all patched together. Have a good day. It's uh, 10 till 10 in the morning. I think I'm gonna start about 10.30. Wait a minute. Yeah, 10.30. So um, we'll see you shortly.